Global variables and equations can be used in SOLIDWORKS models to create mathematical relations between dimensions. Global variables allow you to define a named value within a model, and these can either be set a specific value through a dimension or used in other equations. SOLIDWORKS equations can make use of existing dimensions, mathematical equations, file properties, and model dimensions to build in the desired design intent. By taking advantage of global variables and equations in SOLIDWORKS, you can fully leverage the parametric model and ensure that any features update is intended when modifications are made. In this lesson, you'll learn some techniques in adding global variables and equations and then using them to control the geometry of your part. This lesson is an important one to pay attention to because global variables and equations are used quite heavily through the CSWA exam. So pay attention and learn everything you can in this lesson because it will save you a lot of time in the exam and also future modeling, you'll be able to use this a lot as well. In this model, we have the fillets done as separate features. So fillet three, fillet four, and the internal fillet five or all done separately. Normally you wouldn't do this if they're all the same dimension, but we're just using this as an example for these uh, global variables. By setting these features to a global variable, we can then control all of them together at the same time. To access the equations dialog box, you go to the tools menu and then equations. You can adjust the size of this box by just hovering your mouse over the corner and dragging this out if you want to increase or minimize the size of it. Along the top, there are four different views, which controls the dimensions that you're actually looking at, the sort of view types that you're looking at. The first view is the equations view, and this arranges or organizes the global variables and the equations into categories, but only the ones that are available in the model currently. So here you can see our global variables. We don't have any, but there are already actually a couple of equations when I was making this part that are showing here. The next one is the sketch equation view. This area allows you to add equations that drive dimension values within a sketch. Here you can also reference existing dimensions or utilize other mathematical functions to drive a sketch dimension. The dimension view will list all dimensions that exist in the model and dimension names and values can be modified here. And finally, the ordered view option shows global variables and equations in the order they are solved and by default equations are solved in the order that they are created. You can actually tick, and I recommend you do tick the automatic solve order, which allows SOLIDWORKS to determine the automatic order of equations and therefore help prevent any infinite loops that might uh, cause an issue. If you want to search for any specific equations or values or variables, you can use the filter or fields area, type in whatever you need into this box. So if I was to say sketch one, there is no dimensions called sketch one or sketches called sketch one. But if I was to search for three, you can see there is these two D6 at sketch three. Or if I was to say D6, it's going to show me any values with D6, which happens to be D6 at sketch three. So let's go back to the equations view and clear this search bar box that we're using so we can see everything again. And we're going to create a global variable to control these fillets by clicking in the first box. And we can use any name you want for variables as long as they are unique between them. It's good to try and keep them relevant to what you're actually doing so it's more obvious. Since we're creating a variable to control the dimensions of a fillet, we and they, they're gonna be our smaller fillets in this case, we might just call it SM for small fillet. You can push tab to go across, and in the next box, you'll have a drop down menu which you can pre select certain uh, properties if you wish, or even mathematical functions, but we just need to create a name. Sorry, we just need to create a value. So we're going to say equals and three for three millimeters. The final section is the comments. You can leave this blank, but this is a good area if you wanna put in any comments just to help identify global variables. You can look at the comments and see what's described in that area. So 
here, just for the practice of this tutorial, we'll say small fillet value. With the comment field, we could drop down to the next line and create another variable and continue doing this, but we only need one variable in this case. So we will then click on OK, and we are back at our main model. To assign the global variable to one of these fillet features, we can double click on the first one to kind of make it active and you'll see our dimension that is controlling that. We can edit this dimension or this value by double clicking on that again. To assign a equation or global variable, the first thing you need to do is simply push equal on the keyboard. And this kind of tells SolidWorks that you want to use a variable or equation. You could type in the name, but because we We've already created the variable. We can just ho hover our mouse over the global variables and you can see the SM fillet and the value of three is already there. So we can just click on that and then push OK. Whenever there is an equation or variable assigned to a dimension, you'll notice this equation sign uh, that represents that it's being controlled by a global variable or equation. You can click OK and we're going to continue through that. You'll also see it has a little rebuild uh, icon here, which if you wanted to rebuild the model, even though there's no change, but you'll notice that disappears when we do click on the rebuild. Uh, but to continue on, we'll also assign these other fillets so we can highlight this one. We can just bring this dimension over so it's a little easier to see and repeat the process. So we go equals global variable SM fillet. OK, click to Confirm and our final one, drag this out, double click on it, click OK. You can notice that if you do start to type in, it will also narrow down your selections as well. So if you had a lot of global variable names and you just type in the first few characters, it will refine that selection down. In this case, we only have one. So if I was just to type SM, it's gonna be the only one that shows anyway. So that's another way you can quickly select your variables. And you can see it wants to rebuild the model, even though there's no change, but we'll just click on rebuild so that goes away. So now each of these fillets, the fillet three, four, and five are controlled by that SM fillet global variable. So if we simply change the value to that variable, it's going to update all fillet features within the model. So to control or to modify the values of a global variable, you can go back to the equations dialog box. You'll notice, or you should notice in your model that once an equation or global variable is in your model, the equations folder will show up on the side here. And you can also expand that folder, which will show any global variables that you've assigned or created. If you also want to show this equations folder all the time, you can right click on an empty area in the feature manager tree, go to hide show tree items, and you should see in this feature manager equations, it will by default set to automatic, which is what I was talking about before. It will only show when there is an equation or global variable created in the model, but you can change that to show or hide if you really wanted to for some reason. But personally, Personally, I set it to show and push OK. That way it is always just there. I don't have to create a variable or go to the dialog box separately. It's just there every model I do from now on. So I recommend turning that on. Anyway, to change the value, you can either right click on the equations folder or right click on the variable itself and go to manage equations, which is going to bring up the equations dialog box. And I'll just move this out of the side a little bit so we can see our model because I wanna demonstrate what the automatically rebuild checkbox does. I recommend you turn this on because then it acts as a preview to whenever you make changes in the dialog box. So this way I don't have to change a value and then push OK and update the model. It can just do it as I change in the variable box without pushing OK. For example, if I was to change this value to a five and tab, you'll notice that the geometry of the model has also updated because of that automatically rebuild is selected. If I was to change this to a one and push tab, you can see the fillets are all changing for those features which are assigned the global variable of SM fillet. And to finish, we'll just change that back to a three, which is a little close to this line here. So let's just make that a two. And that gives us just a little bit of room clearance through there. Push OK, and we are done for part one. Let's move on to part two, where we can look at controlling the model a little more more with equations. 
Moving on to our last section of this lesson, this model is actually being created using kind of a, a symmetry type of design. So if I roll back the feature manager past this mirror, you'll see that half of the model has actually been created and then it's been mirrored over to the other side. And what we can do is create global variables to control the width of this part. So let's show you what I mean. We roll that back and we're going to go back into our equations by right clicking going to manage equations and we're going to create two variables we're going to create a uh, we're going to call one overall base and we will set that to 125 and then we are also going to create one called overall boss and that will be 245 click OK. We now want to assign those variables to some of the dimensions and start dr driving them uh, through equations. So if we actually double click on the face of a feature, which is this extrusion, we want to control this 125. So this way we don't have to actually go into the sketch and then access and edit the dimensions. You can just double click on the face of a feature and see the dimensions associated to it. So we can now double click on that dimension and putting in the equal sign is going to activate it as a an equation or a variable and here we want to assign this 125 to the overall base which is also 125 no we're going we're going to change that we're going to change that to overall boss but since the dimension is actually half because we're looking at a mirrored object we actually want it to be the overall boss divided by Two. So you can, this is how you create equations. And we'll tick the little OK box. Now, if this little symbol here, if you click on that, it'll actually toggle between the resulted formula, which is showing it as 122.5. And if you click on it again, it's just showing you the function. So you can toggle between what you want to display. And then we're also going to control this extruded top section by clicking on the face here. We want to do the 60 millimeter, again, equal sign, global variable, and we want the overall base. And again, because it's half of the width, we want it to divide by so now if we go back into our manage equations, we can actually adjust these values here, say from 125 to 140, and making sure the automatically rebuild is checked. Click tab, so updates, and we might even change this one to 250, and you'll see the geometry updates automatically in the background too. And then clicking OK to close the dialog box. If you don't see any change, you can force the change by clicking on the rebuild up at the top here. So that completes the lesson on global variables and equations. It's really important to have a good understanding of this lesson, especially variables are used so much through the CSWA exam. So if you can please become familiar with this, it's going to help you a lot through the exam. And also later on in your 3D modeling experience, it's going to be really beneficial to know how to use equations and variables in your dimensions.